Well, in this video, I'm going to look at what launch angle would maximize the range of a projectile if you were not launching and landing at the same height. If you launch and land at the same height, it's pretty common knowledge, I think, that you'll maximize the range. This is neglecting air resistance uh, with a launch angle of 45 degrees. In this picture here, we're actually looking at a projectile being launched, in this case, from level zero, but it's landing at uh, 192 feet below where it was launched from. It's the same problem as if it was launched from 190 feet above, uh, say, y equal to zero, and, and then landing down here at the, that was going to be, the say, the, the ground. Anyway, uh, the red path here is the path of the projectile uh, launched with uh, uh, 45, uh, 48 uh, feet per second initial speed and a launch angle of 45 degrees. And we can observe that if it landed at the same height as it was launched from, say zero, that this uh, red one does outdistance the other example shown here. And in fact, we're uh, as I prove in another video, uh, give you the maximum range. The blue one here has a launch angle of 60 degrees. The green one has the launch angle that will maximize the range if you're landing down here. And then the black one actually has a launch angle of zero degrees. And so if you're launching from the side of a building and you can launch it at zero degrees, and it lands 192 feet down below where you launched it from, it actually has a greater range, this is from here back to here, than the 45 degree launch angle does. So in another video, I proved some formulas that I'm just going to give here. If you, you want the quick version, just want the formulas, I'm pretty quickly going to give you the formulas in this video. You don't have to wade through all the, the proofs. Here's an animation showing uh, an animated path in, in black where you're actually animating through a launch angle going from zero up to 90 degrees. And you can uh, kind of observe the various uh, results there. Again, the red angle, launch angle of 45 degrees does not give you the maximum range uh, when you're not landing at the same height as you launch from. Here is a little MP4 uh, video embedded in my video, which will allow me to uh, to actually uh, well recreate the video again, but also allows you to uh, use the slider if you want to actually look at the result for different. Uh, launch angles. Now I guess you can't do that in this video, but I have uh, put the uh, uh, four second <laughs> short of just this, uh, this little MP4 uh, video here uh, that you could play and as long as you uh, uh, stop it before the, uh, the end of the four seconds and then you actually could could do what I'm doing here, which is go into the slider and look at different results. In another video, I'm going to actually investigate what happens if you launch from, say, here, and then you land at a point higher instead of lower. This video is looking at landing at a point lower than where you launch from. If you land at a point higher than where you launch from, uh, I'm going to investigate that. Uh, but that's not this one. So there's the animation again. Now we'll get to your, your answers. Uh, the, this function here, x a function of theta, gives the actual range of uh, as a function of theta. And uh, for the uh, essentially equivalent to the problem that I just showed in the animation, if I was using 48 feet per second in the animation, v sub zero initial speed, uh, 32 gravitational constant dealing with feet and seconds, 
And then uh, here I'm with 192 for 8, so here I'm launching from 192 feet above, uh, say, the ground, and we're going to have it landing at, uh, at Y equal to 0 then. So here's that, uh, that function right there, actually function of theta, uh, putting in these values, and then uh, simplifying a bit, it looks like this. And so we can see that uh, if you graph that function with a theta axis and an x axis, that there is a point here where the uh, x value, which is your, your range value, is, uh, is larger. It looks like it's about, about pi divided by 8. It is close to a pi divided by 8 launch angle that would maximize the range in this particular uh, scenario. And we could approximate that on a graphing calculator, which being approximated on a TI-84 uh, color edition. And uh, so this is theta axis of x axis on the calculator. This is the x axis and that the y. So the calculator gave us a maximum uh, value for y, in this case x, uh, and with an x value, a theta value of about 0.378.2286 radians. And this maximum range about 181.19603 uh, feet. So in another video, I actually proved that the maximum possible range is going to be given by this formula here, which may be what you're just <laughs> looking at my video to get th that formula. There it is. It's the initial speed divided by the gravitational constant times the square root of 2 times the initial height times the gravitational constant plus the initial speed squared. That will actually give you the maximum possible range. And in that same other video, I also proved that the angle, launch angle theta that gives that maximum range is the inverse tangent of the maximum range, the x value computer here, divided by h, initial height, and then that divided by 2. So in the example that I had solved using my graph and calculator, approximately, here's an uh, old TI-84 black and white version, and it gave about the same result. Uh, the exact maximum range computed from this formula is 24 times the square root of 57 feet, which is approximately, which is what the calculator said, and the exact uh, launch angle that will maximize that uh, range is this right here, which is about 0 0.378228.19. Now here, after the 8, we had a bit of a discrepancy with the 1.9, keeping in mind that a graphing calculator is only an approximator. Now actually, you use the online TI-89 to do it, and there I got the uh, the theta value to have to be a, like a one eight here, so it's real close to the the one nine, and once again with the same uh, y coordinate, which was the the range x uh, maxing up at least with that mean significant digits with the approximation to my from my formula. Pretty cool, eh?